How's it going? Chuck here with Quiet Cat eBikes here today to talk about unboxing and assembling our 2023 Ibex. First thing we're going to want to do is crack the box open. Once you've got the box open, let's go ahead and take a look inside and make sure that nothing was damaged during shipping. Once we have the box open up, again, we're going to kind of check in here for damage. You can remove some of this shipping material as you look, set that aside. Uh, I want to check inside of my box, make sure I've got a battery. If you don't find a battery box on the Ibex, there's a chance it may be installed on the bike. You can feel it on the down tube. Um, so either way, you'll have a battery inside of the bike. The other piece you'll find is the accessory box. We'll set both of those aside for now. And we'll keep removing at least the wheel blocks here to get uh, access to the bike. Once we feel pretty good that uh, we've taken those, the battery and the accessory box up, we're ready to take the bike out of the box and go from there. So you can lift the bike out of the box by yourself if you want to. It's a little bit easier with a friend. It's like, or if you need to, you can cut the box open. I find it easiest to grab a friend. You can each grab one side of the bike. And we'll lift it right up out of the box and set it down on the ground. Once you've got your bike out of the box, you can put it in a stand or set it on the ground if you don't have a stand. We're going to use a stand for this video. It's just a little easier to see everything we need to do to assemble the bike. Uh, once we have it in the stand here, we want to take all the packaging off. So just make sure you take a little care and caution as you cut these zip ties off that you don't scratch the frame or accidentally you know, catch one of the wires here on the handlebars or down by the rear derailleur. So you cut those zip ties off the front wheel. Just make sure you're supporting it with your other hand so it doesn't drop to the ground or scratch the bike once you cut the zip ties. So we've got all the packaging off of our Ibex bike. Let's take a quick look at the accessory box that comes with it. Inside of this accessory box, you're gonna find a multi-tool. If you don't have tools, this could be useful to assemble your bike. Uh, you've got some instruction manuals, a quick start guide, your pedals, a charger, uh, and lastly, this is an accessory cord if you choose to install aftermarket lights. So next step on our Ibex is we want to install the handlebars. To install the handlebars, we're going to need a 4 millimeter Allen key to loosen these four bolts on the stem and put our handlebar into place. So let's take our 4 millimeter Allen key and we're going to loosen the four stem bolts. You can set these bolts aside. You'll see that the Ibex has a Promex stem on this one. It has a little dust cap. We'll make sure that we hang on to that and set it aside as well. Perfect, once I've got that removed, I'm gonna take my little dust cap, put it into place here in the stem, and drop the handlebars in. If I need to, I can spin that display around just a little bit to access the bolts. And I can line this back up, take my four millimeter Allen key, and just start the threads a little bit. I'm gonna start the threads, or just kind of get each one of these bolts threaded in there just a little bit. Once I have those bolts all set in there, just a little bit snug, I wanna go ahead and kind of take these handlebars and position them in place. Again, I can rotate that display screen if I need to. I'm gonna put it so I can see that Quiet Cat logo, kind of facing forward. That'll put my brake levers down at the correct angle and put my keypad in the right spot. Once I have that in what I feel like is the correct spot, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the stem the rest of the way. Once all four of those bolts are tight, your handlebars are installed, you can make sure they don't spin, and you should be ready to go. Next up for our 2023 Ibex is to install the front wheel. We'll just make sure we're prepped and ready for that. You can see most of these will ship with a shipping plastic. That's just to help protect the fork in shipping. Uh, and we'll set that aside. We're not gonna need it again. Once that's removed, we're ready to remove the front axle and install the front wheel. All right, first thing we're gonna wanna do with this uh, Ibex is you can see the front brake is just hanging free, it was all wrapped up for shipping. Uh, the bolts that you need to attach it to the front fork should be in the fork itself, uh, in the brake mount. We're gonna grab ourselves a five millimeter and just go ahead and take those bolts out all the way. Once you've taken those two bolts out of the fork, let's go ahead and set those aside for a minute. Next thing we're gonna do is loosen the bolts from the brake caliper to the brake adapter. This top one, I'm going to leave in. This bottom one, I'm gonna go ahead and take all the way out. 
Once I've taken that bottom bolt all the way out, I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna grab those two bolts that were threaded into the fork itself, and I'm gonna install them back onto the fork. I'll start with that upper bolt. I'm gonna line it up and start the threads into the frame. I'm gonna grab that second bolt and I can spin that caliper out of the way to put that bolt through the brake adapter, line it up with the frame and tighten it down. I can go ahead and take these two bolts that attach the adapter to the fork and make them nice and snug. Don't need to over tighten, but I don't want them to move. Once those are in, I can spin that caliper back into place. I'll grab that black bolt that I removed earlier and I will reattach the caliper to the brake adapter. Now you can see, I'm not gonna tighten these all the way. I'm gonna leave that caliper loose so I can align the brake after I install the wheel. Now that we've got the brake installed on the fork, we wanna remove this through axle. To do that, I'm gonna grab my four millimeter Allen key first, and I'm gonna make sure that all four of these pinch bolts are loose. I don't wanna take these bolts all the way off, but I do wanna make sure that they're loose. Once all four of those are loose, I'm gonna grab my six millimeter Allen key. I'm gonna put it in the end cap of this axle and I'm going to unscrew that all the way out. You'll see the end cap will come out and then this axle should slide all the way out. It's worthwhile noting that both sides of this axle have an end cap. You can see here, I can pop it out. I like to leave one side in and just take one side out and I'll typically leave that end cap on the non-drive side or the brake side when I take it in and out. We'll set the axle aside for now. With the axle removed, I wanna make sure that I've taken that shipping plastic out of the brake so I can install that rotor into the brake. I'll set that aside, we won't need it again. Once everything's removed, I can take my front wheel and slide it up into the fork, taking a little bit of care to make sure that I align the rotor inside of the pads. So I'll slide that axle through. I'm gonna grab the right side of the fork and hold it into position so I can push that axle through. That axle is through both sides of the fork now. I'm gonna take my end cap, thread it back into the axle. I'll take my six millimeter Allen key and tighten that back down until it's snug. Don't wanna over tighten it. Once that's snug, I'm gonna take my four millimeter Allen key and tighten all these pinch bolts back down. That should lock the wheel into place and we're ready to adjust the brake. So with the axle tight, we'll come back to check our brake. Remember, we left that brake caliper loose. To make sure that we tighten it and center it on this rotor, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna make sure we've got our five millimeter Allen key ready to go. I'm gonna grab the front brake with my left hand and I'm gonna hold the brake tight. While I'm holding that brake tight, I'm going to snug down the two bolts that hold the caliper to the brake adapter. Just kind of make them nice and snug. I'm just gonna test that front wheel, make sure it spins freely. Then I'll squeeze the brake, hold it again, and I can tighten those brakes down the rest of the way. Once the brake is tight and centered on that rotor, I just wanna make sure that this brake hose is not in the way. I can take this little clamp right here and I can spin it to make sure that it's pulling the hose away from the tire and the wheel and the spokes and it can spin freely. If your brake is still making a little bit of noise after adjusting it, check out our brake adjustment video uh, for fine tuning to make any noise that might still exist go away. Next up, we wanna install the pedals on our Ibex bike. Uh, once you take your pedals out of the box, you'll notice they are stamped left and right. It's important that you pay attention to this detail. The right side pedals are a right hand thread and the left side pedal is a left hand thread. So it's really important to get that right pedal on the right side and the left pedal on the left side. If you have it around, it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on the threads of the pedal. Not essential, but if you have it available, it's good to put on there just to kind of help prevent the pedals from binding up on the cranks. So we'll take our right pedal, pretty clear, clearly labeled with that R. I'm gonna thread it into this crank. I'm gonna start with my fingers to start it into the threads, turning it to the right. Once I have those threads started, I can take a 15 millimeter wrench or a pedal wrench, again, 15 millimeters, and I can use that to turn the pedal. 
and I'm going to tighten it down to the crank. I'm going to kind of snug it on there. I don't want to go too tight. Don't need to over tighten it. Just make sure that it's not going to wiggle or move. To install the left pedal, again, I'm going to double check, make sure I look for that L clearly labeled on the pedal here. I'll put it on that left hand crank. Remember, this is a left hand thread. So I'm going to start it with my fingers, turning it to the left. Once I have it started into the crank there, I can grab my 15 millimeter wrench or a pedal wrench, and I'm going to continue turning it to the left. Again, I want this snug. I don't need to over tighten it. I'll get it up against the crank. I'll give it that final little snug. Make sure that it's not loose, but you don't need to over tighten. Next up, we want to install the battery in our Ibex. Uh, first, we're going to need to find the keys for the lock core. The keys should be located up here on the handlebars, uh, usually tied to one of the cables. Go ahead and take those off. Once you've removed the keys from the handlebars, we're going to take the key put it in the lock core and turn it to the left. Now we're ready to put the battery in the bike. So our 2023 Ibex takes the King Kong battery. Um, you can see on this King Kong battery, it has a six blade discharge port. This is our charging port here. Uh, we're gonna put those down towards the bottom of the bike. The other side, you'll see the state of charge light. When we put this into the bike, we're gonna put the six blade discharge down. And then I'm gonna pull this up into the frame. You'll hear it click. And then I can turn this key to the right to lock the battery in place. Sometimes on the new bike, that lock can be just a little bit sticky. Feel free to turn it left and right just a couple times and it should work just fine. With that key removed, the battery is locked into the bike and ready to go. A quick note while we're here, if you need to take that battery out of the bike, we'll put that key into the lock core. We're gonna turn it to the left. We're going to pull on this battery release lever right here and that'll drop the battery out of the bike so you can charge it by itself if you need to. If you want to charge the King Kong battery in the Ibex bike, it's really easy. If you follow the down tube to the bottom of the battery part, you'll find a port here and you can access that charging port for the Ibex battery to charge it right inside the frame. All right, so our final step before we want to turn the bike on is to check the tire pressure. So most of our Ibex tires and bikes will ship with a pretty soft tire, so it's a good idea to put a little bit of air in it before you ride it. We recommend putting the pressure to 15 to 18 PSI. I'm just going to check these quickly. I'll put a little bit of air in this one, up to 15, perfect. I'll check the back, up to 15. All right, I'll make sure to put those little dust caps back on the Schrader valves. That'll just help keep that mud dirt and debris out of your valve. All right, now that we've got the tires aired up, we'll go ahead and turn the bike on. You'll see the Quiet Cat logo on the screen. And there we go. Our bike is ready to go, ready for a test ride. Thanks for tuning in to our assembly video today. Hopefully everything went smoothly for you. If it didn't, that's okay. Uh, feel free to reach out to our customer support team. We're there to help you along the way. Remember, you've got the Quick Start Guide as a great resource or you can find us on quietcat.com.